everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Throws Nation. In today's video, we're gonna go through another clip from one of our recent free webinar trainings where we talked about how to coach the glide. We're gonna talk about some of the variables and basically how it happens so quick, it's an easier technique and it's very unforgiving. So if you're looking to gain a little bit more structure and insight into how to coach the glide, check out today's video. He's opening the arm pretty wide, but he's opening it rotationally. Arm angle needs to be a little higher. He's opening and it's more of a rotational finish. And then he's trying to pull the elbow in and drops the head down. Here's what we like to always talk about the throw, right? It takes two seconds. So when you look at a glide and this is the full time you have to approach it and you just see it, you know, you can see what's going on. So again, you look at Carter, this is her gold medal winning throw. And now we're gonna take those two seconds and we're gonna break it down and we're gonna show how she's setting up pillar one. So we're looking at our pillar two. Pillar three is one of the big keys that gets missed. And then pillar four is where we're gonna drive and kick. And now we're gonna lock down power, set up the power position arm. And now we're really gonna smash through and bring everything forward. When you look at somebody like Gong, right? She's the uh, current world champion. Uh, she won last year in Doha. And again, watch the speed and she's just super explosive. And again, when you're watching it fast and you try to train something that happens so quick, uh, it's, it's obviously incredibly difficult. And so to be able to pinpoint those, those problems and be able to start attacking them is how you're going to be able to get better faster. So here's our six pillars on Gong. We start looking at that fast throw and we're trying to see how everything's developing and we start being able to look and understand how the pillars connect and how that second and a half really for these elite throwers, what that means and how you can start breaking things down. The challenges that a lot of you guys will face will be like no speed or you don't feel very fast, you're not getting power, you can't reverse, you throw too low, you throw too high, um, you can only do a shuffle, you know, you can't really do an effective glide and you can't convert much from a stand to a full, right? So these are a host of things that are pretty normal. Now, one of the things we talk about with the glide, it is less technical and it's somewhat easier to learn, but this is what I'm always real clear about. The glide is super, basically it's, it's just so unforgiving. You have to line it up and if you don't, it's just over. And so here was Timmerman's uh, gold medal throw from the Seoul Olympics in 88. You know, that was one of those great moments where he hits it and he's got that shot hasn't even landed, hands in the air. He knows it's massive. He wins the gold medal. He goes over, I believe at that time it was 23 meters. Huge, huge throw. So the point is the margin for area is, is, is actually smaller in the glide than the rotational throw. The rotational throw is a little more complex, but I also think it gives you a little room for forgiveness where the glide doesn't. So one of the key things we're going to talk about today is getting the kick leg to start first, the shoulder and hip. We're looking at how that all connects. And then the style dynamic versus static and we personally think dynamic is the best way to go because it's actually easier and understanding the sequence of how it's all going to work right center mass angle and how we're moving you know the center mass is a unit and the, and the delivery hips and you know how the hips hit in the power position we're going to talk about those five mistakes so rotating through the finish what i'm going to pull up is so here's a perfect example this is somebody who submitted a video so this is kind of a live you know Today, I've, I'd only seen, I've seen this throw literally for a second. And I thought this athlete did a pretty good job uh, of, of hitting positions. So there's a couple of things. They're spending a little too much time kind of bent. So one of the things we'll, we'll teach again in our system is how, how we set up. I think the setup's not bad. A little bend at the waist, but the athlete here moved everything in a pretty nice position. Right, so they're creating a nice hinge movement through the hip, which is really, really critical. That's part of your pillar one. And so he sets up here, and you're gonna notice this is what I talk about is rotating um, through the finish, right? So he's gonna come through. I like his kind of setup. I like all the push, nice drive, nice kick leg action. I would like to see the athlete get a little bit more here, but this is one of the reasons why that's gonna start to be an issue. So you're going to see a lot of people would look at this and go, Oh, look, the foot's low. He's not getting, he's not getting enough lift. He's opening the arm pretty wide, but he's opening it rotationally. And you can see the athlete opens the arm across like a rotational thrower. Arm angle needs to be a little higher. He's opening and it's more of a rotational finish. And then he's trying to pull the elbow in and drops the head down. What's happening before he gets to that point Kick leg, so this is where we would say is pillar one, two. His, this is where we would say is pillar three. 
needs a touch of work. His drive and kick phase is pretty nice. And then it's understanding how he would be moving in pillar five, but the arm path is opening across that's rotational and it needs to open up a little bit. And obviously the athlete too has a little bit of a late block because of that, but the pulling of the arm, that's your kind of your, your one of your top five is opening that arm more this way instead of opening the arm this way. <laughs>